security in some northern parts of the country, which is crippling polio immunization efforts. The Rotary International Nigeria National Polio Plus Committee Chairman, Dr. Funsho Abdurrahman, explained that although the number of polio cases have reduced significantly over the years, with 42 type 1 wild polio virus cases so far in 2013, efforts must be doubled for Nigeria to achieve the most desired polio-free status. The spread is contracting and the number of cases also reducing, but there are you asked, there are challenges and some of those challenges are our inability to reach all children when we vaccinate because of you know, cultural suspicions, religious suspicions and some people outrightly go out and spread you know, false information about you know, the safety of the polio vaccine which is really not true. In the southern part of the country, some of whom have been free from polio for about three years, will not be complacent and think that polio is gone. It isn't gone as long as you know, children travel with their parents, you know, uh, not only within Nigeria, but also all over the world. So parents need to be aware that in order to get rid of polio totally, we need to continuously immunize our children through routine immunization in those areas when we don't have massive immunizations every month. That is the only way we'll ensure that in the long run, the virus will totally disappear from our environment. And once that is done, then the world becomes polio free. Okay. The state of doctor-patient relationship in Nigeria formed the high point of discussions at this year's scientific conference of the Lagos branch of the Nigerian Medical Association. Participants at the conference, including the permanent secretary of the Lagos State Ministry of Health, Dr. Femi Olugbile, agreed that the relationship between the patient and medical practitioners is an anxious one and needs to be better and more of a partnership. When you come to hospital, you'll be treated as expeditiously as possible, as humanely as possible, as kindly as possible. But also, also you have an obligation in that you need to have realistic expectations of the system. Sometimes part of uh, the problem tends to be that people may come with expectations that are not realistic or that are excessively, extremely ambitious given the context in which they are. For instance, if a, person has, if a doctor has to see a hundred people, you cannot see all of the hundred people at once, but both the rights of the giver of the service and the rights of the seeker of the service need to be defined in a way that everybody understands where they are coming from. And that way, you, everybody, people go away with a good customer experience, which is what we are seeking to get. Success certainly has many brothers. The recent efforts to develop an effective malaria vaccine particularly the finding of 100% protection conferred on some study subjects in a phase one clinical trial of a malaria vaccine candidate has been applauded by the Nigerian Medical Association. The trial, conducted by a team of researchers from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases in the United States and recently published in the peer-reviewed journal Science, is particularly exciting for the NMA on account of the fact that it offers great hope for the African region where malaria is endemic. Recently, researchers found that the vaccine which has been developed in the U.S. protected 12 out of 15 patients from the disease when given in high doses. On the foreign scene and in the Central American country of Honduras, 17 people have been killed and thousands were infected in an outbreak of dengue fever after a state of emergency was declared last month promising to step up the fight against the world's fastest spreading tropical disease, the Honduran government, through its public health ministry, has begun fumigating mosquito breeding grounds in the capital, Tegucigalpa. The viral infection causes a flu-like illness which can develop into a more severe form, occasionally causing death. With hospital resources stretched by the growing number of dengue cases, Health Minister Salvador Pineda called a news conference in the capital to urge citizens to take precautions over their health. The Department of Health of Guangdong Province in China has confirmed that a woman has been infected with H7N9 virus in the province. Samples taken from a 51-year-old woman was positive for the H7N1 virus at the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention. 
The infected patient was admitted to the city central hospital on August 3rd after having a fever for one week. She has been a poultry worker at a local marketplace for many years in Bolos County. She was transferred to the first affiliated hospital of Guangzhou Medical University for treatment. Officials of the department said the patient is in critical condition but remains conscious with stable life signs. The other people who had close contact with the infected woman have shown no abnormal symptoms so far. Finally, eating at least one portion of oily fish, such as salmon or mackerel, a week can halve the risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis, and that's according to a study that spanned a decade. The findings by Arthritis Research UK come from a study of more than 32,000 Swedish women, and they offer another reason to follow the established dietary advice of regularly consuming fish for good health. A fishy diet is rich in omega-3, which is said to protect both the heart and the brain. The researchers writing in the journal, Annals of Rheumatic Diseases, say oily fish appears to be a good anti-inflammatory agent, which will explain how it might combat arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis attacks joints, making them stiff, swollen and painful. wrap on health news. Thank you for sharing your time. I'm Jomi Otaibi.